Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Um, this episode contains a lot of rambling and some high voltage talking. So um, keep watching, stay tuned, thanks for Welcome to my channel, welcome to my video. Today I have a new video and today what I want to talk about is welding and welders. Um, yeah, maybe you've seen my video on my MiG-100 welder. Um, to recap a little bit on that one, uh, a couple of years ago I decided that I wanted to be able to weld at home. I love welding and uh, I love fabricating. Um, I designed some furniture, some railing and just some, some everyday stuff that you need. My wife and I are both quite creative and, and yeah, when we see something or we design something that we want, then we make it ourselves generally. Um, so basically that is what I wanted to use a welder for. Um, so I went and looked around and, and saw that yeah, just most welders were a little bit out of my reach. Uh, and of course, for me, the the, the decision that I made um, back then was okay. Um, I have to invest in a lot of different things when I want to go welding. And um, yeah, um, if I put a welder on. Uh, um, Am I am I using it? Um, you know, so it, it is something that uh, in your mind it seems like a, a good idea and it seems like fun and etc uh, etc. Et but in the end, you have to pay for material. You have to pay for uh, a lot of different stuff that you need. You need to have some space. You need to have time. You need to have etc etc. Um, my goal was always to always to also do like a welding course or, or anything like that, but sadly that was a little bit out of my reach. Um, so what I opted to do was just go for a cheap welder, um, flux wire welded, uh, so you don't need a gas bottle, and um, try and learn to weld with that and, and, and use it for whatever I need. Um, I have now the flux welder for I think over two years and I am no I was very happy with the machine and I will explain a little bit later why I say I was very happy with the machine um, so in short if you don't know anything about flux welding flux welding is a welding with a filled wire um, so the wire is filled with uh, a, a powder that replaces the gas bottle uh, so the machine is much simpler and uh, much cheaper but it is also very limited um, I was reading up and, and, and doing some research on a new welder and someone says uh, said a flux wire is basically a, a very limiting device if you can foresee yourself to go on further into welding and uh, learning more about welding then you know that you will supersede your welder within a few months um, because you just want to do more and you understand everything better and and uh, you want to continue and then a flux weld will be a very limiting factor um, for you um, so I bought a flux uh, a welder and and my reasoning behind it was okay yeah let's just see if I use it how much do I use it I need to buy all the support equipment anyway so it doesn't really matter if I have a, a hundred dollar uh, welder or a five hundred dollar or fifteen hundred uh, dollar welder uh, I, I need to weld, I need to learn it, I need to like it, I need to use it. And if I do, then when the times come, when the time comes, then then you know uh, I might buy something else. Um, yeah, so that is basically the, the decision that I made back then on and 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 how I chose my welder. Now, a little bit about flux welding. Um, 
if you want to start with flux welding what should you expect um, first of all equipment wise I made a, a video about it you need everything that you need for regular uh, welding as well so you need a contact spray to prevent uh, the wire sticking to your torch you need good gloves you need some magnets you need of course a good proper welding helmet so you can weld uh, so you have two hands free instead of uh, holding a mask uh, with one hand um, so um, flux welding in itself um, the big difference is that if you have ever welded with a professional uh, MIG welder uh, you will feel that when you weld and the machine is is properly adjusted and the gas is on etc etc um, then um, your weld feels like cutting with a hot knife through butter um, so it is very smooth you hear a very crisp sound and it depends a little bit uh, at what voltage you are welding but um, you know it's a very crisp sounding uh, 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 procedure and um, you will have very limited uh, splash if you clean your material correctly um, if you weld over painted surfaces, for example, then of course your weld your welder will sound differently because it sputters as it encounters all kind of uh, debris and 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 dirt and and things that a weld doesn't like. Um, if you now go with flux welding, then um, you get a lot of splatter. Um, a lot of chunks flying off the MIG torch uh, you get a very strange sound it sputters and it's crisping and it's splattering and it so it it sounds completely different um, and another thing that I really had to uh, get used to is that a flux weld looks horrible why well there's this mocha colored dust all over it first of all and second of all there's this big slack on top um, I think it's uh, uh, a little bit similar to uh, when you weld uh, with stick um, but but I haven't welded with stick uh, or seen welding with stick that much so I'm, I'm not entirely sure about that um, so anyway when you look at your welds you think like what the hell just happened here and um, you have to clean it with a steel brush or often they, they provide like a little hammer um, but what I suggested in one of my videos is using uh, like an electric battery drill and, and, and then you can uh, buy an insert tool which has a steel wool uh, rotating uh, disc basically now another very big difference is the way you weld with my machine, for example, there is just one position where it welds fine. And if you weld in that position and you um, you take care of what you do, then you can weld 2 mil, 3 mil, 4 mil, 5 mil is a little bit the maximum. But you have to wear, uh, you have to weld very slowly, uh, and you make therefore the thing very hot. But the difference is that with a proper welding machine. Or with a proper welder you can um, basically hold your torch in a certain position and pull it along the seam that you want to weld however with flux you have to move your torch left to right or in a figure eight or some C type uh, not the Jaguar but just in, in, in the letter C uh, uh, type of curvature so that um, you can make a bigger weld because if you just would weld like you would weld with a normal uh, a, a MIG torch and a professional or semi-professional device you expect to get a, a certain welding size or weld size or weld width but with flux you are never ever gonna do that um, why um, well the, the wire just doesn't give you the amount of uh, material that you need 
there's just not enough amperage to to melt that wire and if you up the the wire speed then uh, it starts giving feedback on the yeah, on the torch which is horrible um, what I mean by that is that you can feel the wire pushing into the the metal and into the the, the, the liquid bath and push uh, the torch away uh, and your hand away and by doing so you um, get too far away from the puddle and so you get even more splash and you get even more uh, uh, strange things that you don't want so um, basically you have to fine-tune the way the welder works in my case that is for example in in, in uh, a mode one and a wire speed seven or around wire speed seven 7.5 something like that um, there it welds fine but you have to weld very slowly and you have to wear weld very carefully um, uh, and yeah then something happened I wanted to do a welding course um, for a long time but you know it is uh, in the Netherlands at least uh, a base course is like 1800 bucks um, so so it's it's not just something that you do because you like it and uh, you think it's kind of a hobby you know it's um, it's not it's just not something you you can pay if it's you know I'm an engineer I'm, I'm, I'm not a mechanic I don't usually weld um, so so for me it's not justified to um, to, to spend that type of money um, however what happened is that I work for a company and we are trying to optimize our, uh, yeah, optimize our, our, our work. And one side was practical knowledge and the other side was understanding all the regulations around it. So it was a lot of theory and some uh, practical. Of course, then you start welding with a professional welder and you learn how to set it up and how to use it and uh, what you can do with it. and, and and again, then you feel that, that hot knife going through butter as you go and weld a 10 mil thick plate. Whereas, um, yeah, when I'm welding a 3 mil plate, it's like uh, uh, grinding gears in a car, uh, <laughs> just to, to give a reference. And um, yeah, so in this video, what I'm trying to, to get at is... Um, yeah, some of the features that I like and don't like about my current welder and, and that I liked and didn't like about um, some of the other features and also yeah, what, what material is available, what welders are available, what options are available and um, yeah, also the, what I'm looking at and, and hopefully that also leads to purchasing that device and then also that hopefully leads to uh, doing a review of that uh, device but for now it's just an introduction into um, flux versus uh, gas uh, uh, welding MIG and, um, and and why I chose what I chose and, and why I'm looking for something else um, so basically as I mentioned a little bit earlier uh, if you want to weld you can go for flux wire, but if you're interested in welding and you want to learn more and you know in that course we also had for example positioning so what positions are good to weld what positions you should avoid um, uh, you know what do you need to pay attention to and um, yeah as we do special projects you get what is called a, 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 v, a WPS a welding procedure um, specification and uh, what that basically says is, for example, well, this procedure needs to be done either with MIG, with TIG, with uh, whatever um, uh, variant of welding there is. Um, it needs to be done at uh, a voltage range between, for example, 24 volts and 27 volts. It needs to be done with an amperage range of, for example, 160 to 200 amps. Um, it needs to be done with a wire speed between 8 and 10. It needs to blah de blah de blah de blah de blah uh, all these things and with my machine I could do none of these things um, so we are, I'm, I'm trying to get better I'm trying to go to the next level and now I finally have some information and some input on it and I can do nothing with it at home and um, 
yeah that 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 just uh made me very sad <laughs> that that's just not 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 good if you're interested in something and uh and you cannot use it or you cannot yeah basically you you lose that knowledge again and um and and of course you get frustrated with with what you got and and that's that's of course the the position that i'm in at this point um yeah so 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 that is where i'm at right now and that's why i'm looking for something else and uh, i will tell you a little bit about what i'm looking for and and what some of the features are for me and of course what my budget is now looking at a new welder um I'm going to start off, I just don't have the money for a professional welder. Uh, sadly, I don't live in America because um, in America you have, I believe, Everlast uh, as a welding uh, supplier. And they're like three, four hundred bucks and you get an extremely good welder for that. Uh, they're not available in Europe and there's one company that supplies them in Europe, but they're like three, four times as expensive as in America. Um, anyway. What am I looking for? Well, uh, a, a, a professional welder, let's say between 1500 and, and, and 3000 euros, that's a little bit of range for, for a good uh, professional welder. Now, I don't need a professional welder, um, so I've kind of set my budget to a maximum of 600 euros. And um, here come some of the spec sheets that I want. I want a MIG welder suitable for gas. I want a welder that has a coupling connecting the torch to the machine. So I don't want the torch to be hardwired into the machine, what I have right now. So the reason that I don't want that is because if you leave your cheap uh, torch on or, or, or your wire or your hose of the cheap torch accidentally on something hot, it melts a big gap in it. And I have one or two of these uh, gaps in it. And something else I learned is that if you buy a little bit more professional machine and you weld with gas, you can also weld aluminium and stainless steel generally. However, if you want to do that, you need to change the torch and the liner of the torch. It's just you can just buy a new torch and add it to it because it has the euro plug. Um, but but you have to have a special uh, liner inside if you want to weld different materials um, in some cases and you also have to change your your driving wheels and of course you have to change the material that you're adding uh, if you're if you want to weld aluminium you have to add aluminium of course um, but so yeah that's what that was also the reason that i really want to have a, a torch that is that you can remove another thing with that is that yeah sometimes for storing it is better um the host can be a little bit uh, uh clumsy so that is kind of a thing that I'm, I'm okay with if it's mobile then it's mobile and if it's not then it's not um of course yeah you have to buy a gas bottle and 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 uh, some come equipped with uh, some type of a uh, wheel set on it so you can also put the gas bottle on it um again I'd rather have something mobile than have something on a cart, I think. But but yeah, that's not really a decision factor for me. Uh, nice to have for me is definitely to be able to weld aluminium and stainless steel. I don't really have a purpose for it at this point in time, but I would like to have it as an option. Um, and with the machines that I have in my sights, um, so to say, um, they have that option as well. Um, yeah, uh, since I had that welding course, what I want is I want to be able to weld uh, and adjust my voltage, my amperage and my wire speed. Now, here comes a little bit of a trick. Because a lot of machines are going over to Synergy. What does that mean? It means that there is a computer in there that says if you put the voltage in this position then the amperage and the wire speed should be this and then there is a button possibly that you can push and um, you can fine-tune the voltage slightly when you are welding so for example one person would like to weld at 24 volts and 180 amps 
and another one would uh, keep that 180 amps but would go for 24.5 volts so that that is then something you can manually override you can then override the voltage and the rest so the amperage will stay the same and the wire speak will also stay the same so looking at the options at this point in time uh, i just explained the synergy part there is also the other part uh, that's mostly professional machines where you have the option between synergy and and fully custom adjustable um, Custom adjustable uh, means that you can change the wire speed, you can change the amperage, and you can change the voltage. Um, that can be can be a thing. Uh, preferably, that is what I want. However, um, since I'm not a professional welder, if I don't have a synergy or a half automatic machine, then you would lose all reference, perhaps, and that is maybe a little bit scary. Um, because a welder has a very narrow range of where it performs and, and a very big range where it doesn't perform so um, if you go offline as an amateur and you don't know what you're doing then getting back on track it can can be uh, a little bit challenging maybe um, so that can be intimidating um, so the machines that I have selected I will tell you in a little bit what machines that are one is that synergy and the other one has um, voltage and amperage adjustable but when you do when you adjust your amperage, it also uh, does your wire speed, and then it has a third button that you would think is wire speed, but it is to optimize between the both. Um, apparently, it works very well. Um, yeah, so so uh, that is also another option. So you so basically you have three or four options, um, and uh, but I really need want that option where I can manually adjust it. Um, so where I can say okay I want to have this voltage this uh, amperage and 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 then either wire speed being uh, yeah in there as well or or wire speed being separate um, but on the other hand tempting is also to have that synergy machine that you're at least in the general bar ballpark of where you need to be as in everything in life you make lists when you go grocery shopping you make lists and when you are selecting a new welder you also make lists so uh, a few points of the list i will go through um so the euro stacker i mentioned or the euro connection i mentioned so i can switch torches and uh, replace a damaged torch or for storage purposes um again pricing under 600 euros um, voltage adjustable, amperage adjustable. I would like to have a 200 amp machine. Um, I want to have a, a IGBT uh, instead of MOSFET. Uh, it is higher efficiency and it allows the machine to have a better... Um, how do I say this? Average range or something like that? Um, what you'll see if you look at the machines if, and you look at the specifications, you will see, for example, 65 at 200 amps and 100% 100 at 147 amps, I believe is one of the examples. Um, what does that mean? If you weld full power, so 200 amps, you can do that for 65% of the time. And that's based on 10 minutes of welding, so 6.5 minutes. If you weld under, let's say, 150 amps, you can do it for 10 minutes straight. Um, why is this important? This is important because after that 10 minutes, the machine needs to cool down. Um, so it has happened to me sometimes, but not, not that much. Um, but okay, yeah, you can work around it. And generally, there's something else you can do in the meantime. But um, yeah, it is something to consider. If so if you, if you are... Uh, looking at a machine and, and you really want to uh, to thrash on it and 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 uh, go for long distances of welding and especially with thicker uh, sheet metal like like uh, 6 8 10 12 millimeters then you should really look at that number um, because you'll hit the 10 minutes uh, quite quickly if you for example also need to weld up uh, and then you go crisscross to the left and the right um, yeah, then also you need to, uh, to re you're welding then for a long time, so you need to uh, keep that in mind. In, in Europe, it's a 230 volt uh, connection, but also your amperage on your fuse box is important because um, I have 16 amps fuses, um, but in some cases you need 25 amp fuses or even higher uh, fuses, uh, so that 
um, if you weld something thick, your lights don't go out. You know, so um, um, that might be some consideration to go to 400 volts in the Netherlands at least, or in Europe it's uh, 360 or 400 volts. Uh, so uh, power, uh, yeah, uh, we say Kachstrom, but power, power uh, uh, electronics. But um, so I want to stay away. Uh, I'm, I'm, I have, I have 400 volts in my uh, in my garage, so I can go either way. Um, but anyway, yeah, I need to be careful with my fuses. See, the machine that I look at uh, has seven-year warranty, uh, and the other one I don't know. I haven't seen it. Um, wire thickness: um, six, uh, 0.6 mil, 0.8 mil, and one mil. Um, uh, has one machine, and the other ones I know for sure have 0.8 and 1.0, so one mil. Um, so I think that's fine. Uh, 0.8 is most likely the most I'm going to use. And uh, especially if you want to go higher up in amps, they advise to go uh, to one mil. Um, two tech, four tech. Um, most of you will, if you're not a professional welder, you don't know what it is. But uh, two tech, four tech is uh, two tech is normal operation, where if you start welding, you press the the button on the torch, and when you want to stop welding, you release the button on the torch. That's two tech. If you have four tech, you have to push it and let it go, and then it starts, and push it again and let it go, and then it stops. And that four tech is used for long distances of welding. So if you have to weld a meter, for example, then four tech is nice. Otherwise, you're squeezing the the torch for, let's say, uh, maybe even 10 minutes, 15 minutes of welding. So um, four tech is basically for long welds or, or preference. But um, for me, two tech is what I want. But uh, you see a lot of machines that have two tech and four tech. Um, I mentioned aluminium uh, welding and uh, stainless steel welding. Um, yeah, all machines that I've selected have that. Um, then uh, there is um, lift TIG or TIG. Some machines have TIG welding, most machines have lift TIG welding. What does that mean? Lift TIG is you have a tick torch but you have to add a gas wire to the tick torch and there is not a button on the tick torch to start the gas flow but there is a wire reel with uh, basically some numbers on it you have to basically that allows you to open and close the gas line so you put your torch near the material then you open your torch so the gas can flow then with the other hand you grab your material add the material put your material away and then close the torch again so the gas is closed off again that is a lift tick normally on a tick you either have a handle on the top or a foot pedal um, uh, depends a little bit on your preferences again and what they supply uh, the supplier that I'm looking at has a tick machine where they also provide the foot pedal um, so yeah, that, that is uh, lift thick is a thing sometimes um, on two of the machines I'm looking at, they have it on the other machine that, that basically is my favorite at this point in time, it doesn't have that. But again, I've tried thick and um, it's not, well, maybe, maybe uh, yeah, of course everything's learning, but um, uh, it's it doesn't really feel like my thing. Um, uh, flux, all machines can weld flux, uh, so you can weld with gas and with ga without gas with these machines. But with a flux machine, you cannot just uh, weld with gas because there's no gas uh, uh, point on the machine to add it. So, um, yeah, then another thing is uh, automatic wire feed. And you use that if you put a new spool on it. And uh, normally you would feed the wire in using your torch, but then you also release gas. So you have a button to feed the wire in using the electric motor instead of the torch. So you don't waste gas. Uh, most machines have that. Uh, gas regulator included, yeah, that's also a thing. If you buy a welder for gas, you also need a gas regulator um, to mount on your gas bottle. Uh, some machines come equipped with one, uh, most, be, most machines don't. Um, so it's, uh, I believe, like uh, prices that I've seen now is like uh, around the 30 euros, um, some a little bit below, some a little bit over. And then another thing is the torch. Uh, I mentioned that um, when I uh, used a water-cooled machine, the torch felt really heavy, like 15 kilos, uh, with, the, with the hose and everything connected, so you really had a weight in your hand, and with my cheap-ass machine, there's no weight to it at all. Um, now, the machines that I'm looking at are not water-cooled, so therefore they also have a cooling-down period, 
but still you have a high quality torch and a low quality torch and the machines i'm looking at they both have a high quality uh, torch and um, it is also because of the higher uh, machine power so the 200 amps and 230 amps type of range there is where you get the, generally the bigger torches from what i've researched so far um, now something else that i found uh, during class is that <clears throat> I had these lightweight um, calf leather uh, uh, gloves for tick welding and for my flux machine that was plenty enough I, I almost never burned my hands and I um, but when I started to weld with a real machine and and when yeah then you know especially thick material and when you for example have to go upwards in a weld um, it's a special technique so you can stack your welds and, and, and weld upwards um, your hand basically is floating in front of that weld all the time and um, your gloves get extremely hot so those uh, I never had any issue with those gloves using my machine but uh, I burned literally through two sets of those gloves um, when I was welding uh, with professional machines because the welds are just there's just so much more energy put into the weld and um, so I literally burned my hands and, and, and my gloves got fire and, and so it was really strange. Um, so I had a huge blister on my knuckle uh, on, of my finger, on the top of my finger basically because I was guiding with that hand along uh, a weld and, and it just caught fire and I couldn't get my glove off in time and, and I had a big blister on the top of my, uh, on my, on top of my finger so it was really annoying. Um, so yeah, uh, um, if you go for a more professional machine, uh, definitely uh, think about closing. So in closing of this very long gibberish uh, story, um, why did I go for flux welding? Um, what are the advantages of flux welding? What are the disadvantages of flux welding? And what are my personal criteria for going uh, into a more professional machine? And um, yeah, what type of machines are there? Um, yeah, that is something you have to determine for yourself. You have to determine for yourself what you find important. And um, sometimes you have an 800 euro machine that has a fixed wire, and sometimes you have a 200 machine with a, a, a with a loose wire with a euro connection. So um, it, it 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 depends on what you want. And and if you know for sure you only have thin sheet metal, you most likely will be fine with a 135 or 180 or or something like that amperage machine um, I want to go for the 200 and maybe the 230 um, but yeah again fuse wise that's a little bit on the on the bolt side um, yeah um, I need to think about it a little bit more but I at least wanted to um, make this video and explain a little bit my thought process and how I go about it and uh, maybe it helps you in some way and uh, if you have a review or a question or, or information regarding the machines let me know um, I answer questions in Dutch English or German maybe even also I can try um, and uh, yeah uh, if you have any comments or any questions let me know thank you for watching and hope to see you on the next episode thank you bye bye